It's really a predicament that we're in here because the, the truth is that nothing has to happen for us to be happy. The problem with that is how can everything be different without anything changing? Right? Because if I say to you, nothing has to happen for us to be happy, I could say another way of saying the same thing is I could say that nothing has to happen for you to be what you really are. You know, and one of the things I've talked about in this class is that um, meditation is a way of practicing being, paying attention and noticing and the thing that there is to notice and pay attention to that's more important than anything else is the truth, meaning that the truth is that which doesn't ever change. The truth is the reality of who we are. It can, it's been spoken of in terms of talking about it as awareness or consciousness and so forth and so on. And it's also been talked about it in terms of it, it, it the, the attraction to, to this possibility has to do with the idea that you will be happy. You know, everybody wants to be happy. The attraction to the possibility is that you will have peace. Everybody wants to have peace. But the predicament that we're in is that in order to realize the truth, in order, in order to be what you are, nothing has to happen. And that's, I think, that's where, that's the sticking point, right? Because if I say nothing has to happen, and the experience that you're having of yourself is that you are this person with a body, living in time, living in this world, and that's not a pretty picture, that's not necessarily fun all the time, there's a lot of suffering involved, there's pain involved. So then the way that would land for you, understandably, would be how can you tell me nothing has to happen for me to be happy? Because as far as I can tell, something has to change for me to be happy. And if nothing has to happen for me to be happy, that's not, I can't get, I can't do that one. And that's really the predicament, you know, that we're in, you know, that to, if I say to you that you can be free, um, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm speaking uh, with the understanding or the inference that you're not free. However, the reality of who it is that we are is free. And so if it's the case that you don't have to change and you already are what you already are, what's true is already true, then you are free. But the you that you consider yourself to be, that you carry yourself around in the world as, is not free. But you are free, but you're not free. <laughs> so how does, that, how does this work? And that's the predicament that we're in, in terms of this possibility of realizing the truth, realizing your true nature, and experiencing freedom. Because the experience of freedom is not freedom. See, we, we run into these paradoxes. The experience of freedom is not freedom. What does that mean? Well, who you really are is, is not free because who you, really do, who you really are doesn't know not being free. Do you follow me? Who you are, who you really are is not free because who you really are doesn't know not being free. Who you think you are, who we consider ourselves to be, the one with the body living in time, right? That's limited, There's, that's, that's an experience in which there isn't freedom you're not free, you can't uh, be happy under all circumstances, you're, you're limited and you're subject to your emotions, you're subject to time, you're subject to circumstances, and so that's certainly not free. 
And that one wants freedom, you know, that one wants to be free, that one wants peace. But the problem is that freedom and peace are already true. And the problem is that that one that wants freedom and peace is already the one that's free. You see the problem here? <laughs> right? And so if nothing has to happen, well, how do you digest that? You know, how do you process that? Well, you can't process it. You can't process it. We could say, for example, that a seed holds, that within a seed is a tree. Yes? Within a seed, seed is a tree. If you get a seed that's a seed of a tree, there's a tree in that seed. It's a little seed, right? But a whole tree is in that little seed, obviously. However, in order for the seed to be the tree, it takes time, right? And everything appears to us that way, right? And so that's why if I say to you, you could be happy, you could be free, then the way the mind relates to that, understandably, is, well, okay, well, that must take time. Just like the seed becoming the tree takes time, right? The mind is linear. The mind operates it with time, past, present, and future, right? The mind is linear. It operates with time. However, the one exception to this business of the seed being the tree is you and me. We already are the tree, completely grown, completely fulfilled as a tree, and at the same time, we're a seed. Because why? Because there's no time. Both things are, all, all, uh, both things are true at the same time. That's why it, 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 for you to discover and realize the possibility of yourself, which is already free and already happy, literally takes nothing and doesn't involve any change. So that means you could stay, you could continue to be the person that has a body living in time and at the very same time not be the person that doesn't have a body living in time. At the very same time. And nothing has to happen because it's already true. That's why they say, the, the teachers that talk about these things call it that the gateless gate. The open secret. You ever hear that term, the open secret, right? If it's, if, it's, if it's an open secret, it's not a secret, is it? If it's a gateless gate, there's no gate, is there? Right? That's, that's the same way as saying nothing has to happen for you to be what you are. Literally. But that's not possible, right? That's not possible. Because when you take that in and it gets processed through the brain and the mind, uh, the brain and the mind spit that out. It's like, no, something has to change. If you're telling me I could be happy, but I'm not happy, if you're telling me I could be free, but I'm not free, obviously something has to change. See, this is the, 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 the predicament we're in, is that we're not, um, the mind that we have and the experience that we have of who we are and, and the way that we relate to everything can't process a miracle. The mind can't process a miracle. A miracle is something that's not supposed to happen, right? A miracle can't happen. That's why it's miraculous. It can't happen, right? And you and I are a miraculous. You and I are a miracle. You, you and I are something that can't happen. It's not supposed to happen, right? What is it that can't happen? What can't happen is you could be the way you are as a person with a body in time, with your craziness and your faults and your reactions, Right? All that stuff, your warts, you can be that, and at the same time be the reality of yourself as awareness itself. In fact, that's true. It's true that that's the case, and nothing has to happen. So you see, so then you would say to me, okay, you know, okay, I want to have that experience, right? So, so, so I want to have that experience, and so you're saying nothing has to happen, and I'm already having that experience, but, I, but I'm not aware of having that experience. I'm still experiencing not being free. I'm still experiencing living in time. I'm still experiencing identifying myself with the body. So tell me what to do, right? Tell me what's the secret, what's the key? There isn't any secret, and there isn't any key. So it's, uh, that's just the way it is. It's a miracle in the sense that at any time, at any time, 
because what we're talking about doesn't exist in time, so it must be possible at any time because it doesn't exist in time. At any time, the bubble can pop. At any time, the bubble can pop. This is a very, very interesting phenomenon, you know, because the predicament that I refer to is that no matter what people say who have had their bubble pop, no matter what people say who have had their bubble pop, the people whose bubble hasn't popped, it doesn't matter. There is nothing that anybody can say to anybody else who hasn't experienced having their bubble popped, who hasn't, hasn't experienced waking up, who hasn't experienced the truth. There's nothing that anybody can say who has experienced that to people who haven't experienced that that can make any difference. That's, that's the dilemma, you know? That's why there are so many spiritual seekers, right? Because the idea of seeking is, is, is ultimately counterproductive. Ultimately, it's worse than not seeking. It's worse than not seeking because if you're seeking something that can't be found, right, you could say that somebody who's not bothering to do that is probably better off. Right, because you can't find it. So how could you? Why you're, you're why are you seeking? But at the same time, you know, again, when you look at it from a linear perspective, from you look at it from a time or a mind-based perspective, it's like, well, I don't know what else to do. Right? I don't know what else to do except to seek. I don't know what else to do except to read books. I don't know what else to do except to meditate more. I don't know what else to do. Uh, maybe become a vegetarian, maybe go to the Himalayas, you know, maybe get a guru, maybe take some uh, ayahuasca, you know, all these, other, all these possibilities, you know. Because in, a, a, a human being doesn't know how to be. A human, a human being doesn't know how to be. A human being only knows how to do. And so for, from the perspective and the viewpoint of a human being, if there's a possibility of being happy and being free, then tell me what to do, right? Because that's the only way that I can perceive, that's the only way I know how to have anything be so, is I've got to do something. Just do it, like Nike says, right? Just do it, right? But this is the one thing that if you do something to try and be what you are, you will be moving away from it. Anything you do to be what you already are, you're moving away from it. So now what? You can't, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing that you can change. So one of the ways this is talked about, I mean, the reason I'm talking about this is because, you know, at this time of the year, people want presents, right? People like to get presents, right? This gift is a gift that you're the giver, the receiver, and the gift. Another paradox. This gift, you're the giver, the receiver, and the gift, all at once, all happening at the same time. And everybody would like to uh, give give presents and receive presents. Well, the presents I'm talking about is not the 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 object, the thing. I'm talking about presents like being present, that kind of presence, right? Talking about presence. And so maybe the thing that would make a difference. Now again, I, I'm I'm not going to make sense here because I'm talking about something that doesn't have to change. But I'm going to talk about. Some, some way of changing that which doesn't have to change in order to realize what doesn't have to change. If you can follow that, right? Maybe the thing that would make a difference in terms of the experience that is possible for us is to simply be present. That's one way that this has been talked about, to be present, which implies you're not present, right? And if it implies you're not present, then who is the you that's not present? Well, the you that's not present, according to this way of talking about it, is the truth. The you that's not present is the you that you really are. It's not present. The, we, the you that's present is the you that you think you are. And that you that you think you are maintains its existence 
right? That you that you think you are maintains ex its existence through thinking, right? I just said, do you, you think you are? That you maintains its existence through thinking. It maintains its existence through its emotions, right? Thinking and feeling, right? What's happening for you right now? You're thinking and you're feeling and you're sensing, aren't you? That's how you're here. You're being here as a thinker, a feeler, and a sensor. So you have thoughts, you have emotions, and you have physical sensations. That's the you that's here. However, at the same time that you is here, there is an awareness of all of that, is there not? There's an awareness of thinking, there's an awareness of feeling, there's aware, an awareness of sensing that's here at the same time. And so the thinking is always changing, isn't it? The feelings are always changing, the sensations are always changing, aren't they? But the awareness of all of that is never changing at the same time. So the paradox is that which, that which is changing is not changing and that which is changing is not changing. That's just the way it is. So how do you get to where you already are? You know, because this possibility is worth the trouble. This possibility is worth the confusion, right? It's worth dealing with the paradox. Because what it offers us is, is an experience of having the life that we're living be one in which it's actually interesting and exciting instead of boring and painful and awful, you know. It's like that, that the way they talk about uh, the kingdom of heaven on earth, right? The kingdom of heaven on earth would be that the life you're experiencing right now, instead of being awful and painful and suffering and you're coping with it and you're struggling with it and you're afraid and you're trying to get through it and you, and you don't want it to end and you're trying to hold on and you're trying to avoid and you're trying to hold on, right? Instead of all that, that all of a sudden all that becomes interesting and exciting. Why? Because if that becomes the experience you're having as the truth of yourself, as awareness, which is unaffected by what's happening, right? Now you can have some fun, right? Now what was heavy is light. Now what seemed to be dreadful is interesting because there's no harm being done anymore. And so I, at the same time, and here's the, here's the real, here's the real payoff, the real package, the real gift. On the one hand, you can be in a body and be human and have feelings and have thoughts, right? And, and, and here's the caveat, and still be identified with it. Do you understand? And still be identified with it. Because one of the things that a lot of people think is, well, I have to stop being that. I have to stop identifying with that and start to identify with the awareness so I can experience the freedom and the peace the awareness has, right? But remember, if we go back to what I was saying before, nothing has to change. Well, that means you can still be identified with that. You can still be an asshole. You can still be identified with your body. You can still have your feelings. You can still be confused. You can still not know who you are and know who you are at the same time. It must be true, right? If nothing has to happen, it must be true that you cannot know who you are and be who you are at the same time. That's a real paradox, right? You can stay in the experience you're having and be identified with your body and worry about the future, right? And try and avoid pain and try and hold on to pleasure and still experience that in such a way where there's no real impact, there's no real effect of the whole thing. It's an interesting possibility, isn't it? It's, it, it, you can't, you know, no matter how many ways you go at it, the mind can't chew this and swallow it. It can't happen. And yet at the same time, it's absolutely true at all times. It's absolutely true at all times. But if you're awake, why would you still want to identify with like, the pain and unpredictability? Because it's interesting and it's fun. There's no sting anymore. So you would still allow yourself to experience fear and 
It's not even, it's not a matter of allowing yourself. It's, it's a matter of, there's no reason not to, because remember, as it says in The Course in Miracles, if you're inclined to approach it from that point of view, um, what is real can't be threatened. That's what it says. What is real can't be threatened. What is unreal doesn't exist. If that's true, right, then let the party go on. <laughs> if that's true, why not, right? If that's true, you know, if, if you were experiencing yourself as what you are, which you are, right, but you're not, but you are, if you experience yourself as what you are, then nothing can harm you. There's no time, right? Everything that's happening is an appearance. It's not even actually real. You're in a movie, right? If you could experience that, why would you want to leave? Right? N now everything that was a problem is just interesting. You know, everything that, that was a problem is just that the whole thing becomes different. Nothing changed and everything's different. So you can be anxious and know there's nothing to be anxious about. It doesn't matter. You, you could be anxious and know there's something to be anxious about or be anxious and know there's nothing to be anxious about. It's all interesting. You could be anxious and, and, and see, here's the thing. I mean, even if you, and this is one of the things that a lot of uh, contemporary spiritual teachers miss the ball on. Right? <clears throat> the idea of waking up and knowing the truth of yourself doesn't mean that the play's over. It doesn't mean the movie's done, right? So you wake up and know the truth of yourself, and because you're still completely identified with being a person in a body, right, it still makes sense to have a self-improvement program. It still makes sense for the person that has a body and is living in time and has psychological issues, which everybody does, right, to, get, to work through those issues. It still makes sense to do that. Because in a, in, in a relative sense, uh, see, in a relative sense, as, as the person in the movie, the movie continues. So in the movie, the person in the movie needs psychotherapy. So they do psychotherapy in the movie. But it's just a movie. Do you understand? If you're sitting in the audience looking at the screen, right, and you're seeing all the things that are happening on the screen, the whole point, the whole point of going to the movies is to, to sit there and forget that you're looking at a movie, isn't it? Isn't that the point? Otherwise, you, you, you could never really enjoy the movie, right? Because you, you would know this is just a movie. But the more you forget you're in the movies, that's why, that's why they turn the lights out, right? The more you can, and that's why they have, you know, um, the, the bigger screens, right? And all the other things to make it more virtual, right? Make it like a virtual reality, right? And that's why virtual reality is going to be the thing that replaces movies at some point, you know, where you just uh, put, an, a, uh, put an electrode cap on and you can go anywhere and experience anything, right? But that's not really happening. It's interesting. We're simulating what's already true. Because it isn't really happening. It's already true. That's the thing. That's all that happens. That's all that changes. That's all that shifts when you wake up and discover the truth of yourself as awareness, is you discover that what was torturous and heavy and confusing and difficult is now interesting and fun. It's all already working. Nothing has to change. Yeah? But it seems to me like we can't really know the truth. All we know is that Yeah, that's right. You can't know the truth. You can't know yourself. They asked a, 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 you know, a very distinguished, highly practiced monk one time, who are you? Do you know what I mean? And he said, don't know. <laughs> and then, you know, people who look at that and say, he doesn't know? <laughs> he said he doesn't know? He was telling the truth. He was actually saying he know he, he was actually saying he knows who he is. Because if you know who you are, you don't know who you are. That's how you know who you are, because you don't know who you are. You, see, you can't get around the paradox. But the reality of it is, the reality of it is the reason that you can't know who you are is and, and this is where the reality breaks down again, because the knowing of who you are is only a function of being that. That which you are, when you're being that, knows itself. 
You understand? But there's no, nothing to know like it's outside of that. So we're using the word know here differently, right? Because the way you would normally use the word know is that what I know is outside of me, right? And that has to be outside of me for me to know that. There's me and what I know, right? But not in this case. This is miraculous. This is the miracle. In this case, what you know is you. You are what you know at the same time. There's no space and no time. Your being it is knowing it at the same time. See, it's, when you talk about this, you know, I don't know about you, but when you talk about this, even when I hear myself talk about this, it's kind of like it's so close, right? It seems like it's so close. But that distance, this, the, as close as it is, could be a million miles. It doesn't matter. Right? Because as close as it is, it's still not it. It's still not it. That's why people who become seekers and go to India and get a guru and meditate and have these spiritual experiences, you know, they're more frustrated than the average person, right? Because they feel like they're so close, but they didn't get it yet. They're so desperate to get it, but they didn't get it yet. And the reality of it is, the reality of it is, the only way that it's possible to get it is to let go, to stop seeking. There's nothing you can do to get what you already are. There's nothing you can do to get what you already are. There's nothing you can, there's no way to be what you already are. There's no way to know what you already are. There's no way to live as if you are that. Yeah. It does and it doesn't, because it's true. You know, what you're saying is true, and it's not true, right? Because the more you learn about it, the more you believe things about it that are conceptual, that have nothing to do with it. So the more, so it's interesting, it's kind of the, the when you learn about it, you, you, the experience you have in a time-based reality, the experience you have as a person is when I learn about it, I'm getting closer to it, right? But you're actually getting farther away from it. The more you learn about it, the farther you are from it, right? But then at some point, having taken that trip of learning to be it and getting farther away from it while you're learning to be it, at some point, that, that bubble breaks. And then you realize that, that none of that was ever necessary. But it was, but it wasn't. <laughs> you see what I mean? You can't talk about it, you know? You, you have to do what you think you have to do to get where you think you have to go to find out that you didn't. <laughs> so, living as a person, when you live as a person, thoughts kind of guide your life, correct? Depends on the person. But we're trying to quiet our thoughts and ignore them so that, you know, we don't, we, we pay less and less attention to them. And when you do that and we push them away, they, you said they dissipate. I've never said that. I've never said that. I've never said to, to ignore your thoughts. I've never said to push them away. I've never said to try and control them. I've never said that. I understand why you would say that, because no matter how many times I say that that's not what I'm saying, the mind comes in and says, yes, but, yes, but I want to control. The mind's about control. Yes, but I want to control. Yes, I don't want to have negative thoughts, so I have to ignore them. Yes, I don't want to have negative thoughts, so I have to try and control them and only think positive thoughts. Tell me how to think positive thoughts. I just want to think positive thoughts. But the awareness that you are has no, doesn't care what happens. It's not interested in what happens. And so even in the practice of meditation, if you've practiced the way it is meant to be done, what we're saying is to sit there and be aware, right? So you're aware, you're aware of thoughts, you're aware of feelings, you're aware of sensations. You're not trying to change them, you're not trying to control them, you're not resisting them, you're simply aware of them. And the awareness that you are has discernment. The awareness that you are naturally knows the difference between a thought that's insane and a thought that's useful. It just knows the difference, right? Therefore, there's nothing that that awareness needs to do about thinking. That awareness doesn't need to do anything about thinking. 
when you're driving the car and the light is red, you will push the brake. When a thought arises in your mind, you know, uh, that you're a Martian, the awareness that you are will pass it over because it knows immediately what's true. See, we don't trust that. We don't trust the awareness that we are, even though it's been, be, it's been in the back seat of your life running things all along. Without that, without that, you wouldn't be here for sure. And we don't trust that. We, we, trust, we trust thinking. You know, we trust thinking. We trust feeling as a way of knowing what's going on, right? And although thinking and feeling is a useful way of knowing what's going on, it is so limited and so unstable and so unpredictable that it doesn't work well, does it? You know, if you look and see, it doesn't work well. Everything that everybody ever does in their life that's a function of thinking, right? Everything that everybody does in their life that's a function of how they feel and how they think produces very limited results. It just does. If you, if you, look, at this, you know, if you look at the reality of it, it just does. But you see, the way we relate to all that is the way people relate to going to a casino. Every once in a while you win, and so you're sure that you can win the big one. But that's nonsense. That's naive. That's nonsense. The people who enjoy going to casinos have enough money to go there and lose it, right? Isn't it true? Either you're somebody that has enough money to go there and lose it, so you can have fun either way. It doesn't really matter to you, right? Or you go there hoping you can win the big one, right? And then you lose it, but you just can't stop the poss you can't stop feeding the possibility. You can't give up. You, uh, you're unwilling to give up hope that someday, somehow, when you go there with your limited amount of money, that you're going to hit the jackpot, even though the odds are against you. You buy a lottery ticket, right? What do they say? Get you. you, you the problem, it's more probable that you'll get struck by lightning than winning the lottery ticket. But don't give up. If you don't have a ticket, you can't possibly win, right? That's the logic that people follow when they buy the ticket, right? But here, in terms of what we're talking about here, you don't have to buy any tickets. It's not a lottery. You don't have to win. You already won. You already won. So the question is now, if you already won, are you willing to have the experience of having already won and then play? That's an interesting possibility, right? It's like I say in my book, right? The way, the way to experience the freedom that's available to us in life is, is, to, is to end the whole thing, <laughs> is to end it now. I'm not talking about suicide, right? The way to, 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 uh, to end this bad dream is to die. And don't wait. Don't do it in the future. Because the one that's going to die, right, the one that's going to die is the fictional character that's in the movie. And so if you want to get out of believing that the movie is really a movie, right, let the character die. And because it's only a movie, does the character really die in the movies? Right? The character never really dies in the movie. I just saw one last night, and De Niro's fine. He's died in other times, but he's back, right? That's actually reality, right? If you let the fictional character that you consider yourself to be die, if you let it go right now, right? Because the only thing that's ever going to die is who you think you are, right? That's who it's going to die. That's what doesn't want to die, is who you think you are. But if that's not who you really are, then just like the character in the movie, when that dies, nothing dies. Because nothing was born. Because the, 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 the truth of yourself wasn't born. What got born was the character, the fictional character that you are got born. I mean, that, even, that didn't even get born. What got born is a body, and then that got Right? That got you got introduced to yourself, didn't you? What got born is a body, and then at some point they started to give you language, and then they said, okay, here we go now. Uh, your, your, your name is Michael, right? So from now on, when we say Michael, 
you answer, right? And that becomes so complete, right, in terms of the name you get, the identification with the body, the idea you have about who you are as a person, right? That gets so real that, that you actually believe it's true. You actually believe that you are that person, that character, that fictional character. And now you're stuck in a movie. Now you're stuck in a movie that's a movie, but you don't know that it's a movie. You think it's true. That's exactly what's happening. You're stuck in a movie that you think is reality instead of a movie. And if you wake up to the truth of yourself, the only thing that happens is you realize that the movie is a movie. And that the character in this movie can die and come back. So you die, right? So you let go of identifying yourself as a character that you think is real other than the fictional character. You let that go and you die. And then you're still here in the movie. So what's the point? If we're all just going to die, maybe we, we do it over again somewhere else. The point, the point is whether you live or not. That's the point. Because if, if, if the experience you're having right now is a fictional character instead of the truth of yourself, then you don't really exist. And so the possibility is to really exist. And the you that does really exist, does exist and is here now, but that's not, you know, the, but that's not who you have yourself being. That's not who you have it that you are. It's so simple. That's what the teachers say. This is so simple and so easy and so obvious that it's very complicated, right? Because how simple can it be to be what you already are? There's nothing that can be simple. There is po nothing possible to be that simple, right? How can it be simpler than to be what you already are? But it's complicated because you don't think that's so. That, that's the complication. You already are what you, what you are, but who you think you are is what you're paying attention to, isn't it? That's what you're paying attention to. So when you practice meditation, what are you doing? You're learning to be aware of, of your attention. And if, you've, if you learn to be aware of your attention, so here, here's a real practical, instead of, <laughs> instead of my just leaving you confused, here's a real practical possibility, right? If meditation is about learning to pay attention, and it is, right? then if you learn to pay attention, you can use it, right? Instead of it using you. Because before you learn to pay attention, it's using you. You think you're paying attention, but you're not. Your attention's taken, right? So you learn to pay attention, now you can use attention. What are you gonna use it for? Pay attention to awareness. That's what some of the highest masters and teachers said. If there's a prescription I can give you that would be something that could work is use the attention that you have to turn that attention toward the source of it and begin to pay attention to awareness consistently. That will be a very challenging practice, right? Because you're habitually addicted to paying attention to what's outside of yourself, aren't you? Right? And so in order to turn that attention and pay attention to the awareness itself, you're going to have to have not only attention, but you're going to have to have intention. And the thing that's going to give you the intention to use your attention to pay attention to awareness, right, is your understanding of the predicament that you're in. Do you follow me? You're understanding that unless you wake up, unless you experience the truth of yourself, you and the rest of the herd will go off the cliff. That's where it's going. It's going off the cliff. There is no hope. <laughs> there is no hope. The, the sun is going to burn out. Do you understand? The sun is going to burn out. This planet will end. We don't live in reality. We don't live in, we don't live in relationship to that truth, do we? Now, you know, your life, the life that you think is life will end. The world that you're in that you think is permanent will come to an end. It's all going to come to an end. The whole thing is impermanent. It's all impermanent. 
And your understanding of that, that's why the spiritual teachers teach that, right? They want you to get clear. That's why they send the monks to do meditate in the graveyard. That's why they send the monks to meditate uh, it, it, next to the dead bodies in the fields where they're left for the dogs to come and eat at night. They want you to be, they want you to, to face the truth of impermanence. They want you to be there and look at the, the dead bodies and know that's you. That's going to be you. That's why it's important to face those things, right? Because if you face the truth of impermanence, if you face the truth of how unstable this life is, and, and, and the truth that this is, this is all going to come to an end, it's not real, right? If you face that, it'll motivate you to have the intention you need to pay attention to the truth. Does that make sense? But in order to do that, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to get at yourself out of the dream. You have to, you know, you have to, you have to break free from running with the herd. You have to break free, free from being part of this hypnotic trance that everybody's in, in which they think this is reality, and within this reality, we're going to try and make this work. And if you want to know how that's going, watch the news. Yeah. What you say about the monk going to the cemetery and all that, we all realize when we go to somebody's funeral or the loved one die, that yes, it ends. And during those few days, everybody talks, even at the funeral, say, you know, yeah, he made money, what good is he, and all that thing. But, so, every person knows all that, definitely. But to bring to the other part, as you say, it doesn't come easily. It stays there for a few days. You don't have to go to monk got the experience. But the knowledge has to be used up, as you say, to make that thing permanent, I guess. Right. Well, the reason it doesn't come easy, see, see, now watch what happens. The reason it doesn't come easy is because it doesn't come. It can't come easy because it doesn't come. It doesn't matter how it comes. It can come easy, it come, can, can come hard. It doesn't matter. In both cases, it won't work because it doesn't come. And when you say that everybody knows, you know... Yeah, uh, they, yeah, you no, they don't. I mean, if, if everybody knew about impermanence, if everybody knew about the reality of death, right, then they would know about it consistently as they move around in their life, not once in a while when they can't avoid it. But they don't know about it consistently. They're, they're living in a dream. They're walking around as if they're not going to die, right? You know, it's like Carlos Castaneda said, you know, if, you, if any of you remember the books that were written by Carlos Castaneda about um, an, alter, an, an, an alternate reality, his teacher said to him, death, in, death is an advisor. Death is an advisor. You should walk around in your life with death sitting on your shoulder as an advisor, advising you that what's going on is an appearance and is impermanent and is not going to continue. You should have that advisor available at all times so you're in c contact with reality. And that will motivate you. That will motivate you. That's why as people get older, they get a little more serious about this, right? Because they can look in the mirror and see this thing's dying, right? But that in itself is not going to be enough. You know, you have to be actually willing to have enough intention and attention to take advantage of the teachings that are available to all, all of us, right, in order to try and wake up so you can discover you don't have to. Can't be easier than that, right? Tr to try and do something you don't have to do. Right? Okay, have a good holiday. Wake up. Thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs>